Greetings, all! Today, we are going to take a special look at the Ice type, and analyze its attributes, the Pokémon assigned to the type, and how it functions from a combative standpoint. Existing as one of the least common types known, the Ice type is quite literally a frigid type that harnesses the power of extreme cold in order to chill the hardiest of creatures and bring them down for the count. This type is one in tune with the opposite end of the temperature spectrum compared to the fire type, and is able to more than bring down the house and keep others from moving by freezing them in their tracks and slowly destroying them bit by bit with frigid fury. It might not be that common or have much to offer from a defensive position, but the ice type is still one that can prove to be a nuisance and one that has a lot of different Pokémon to work with that can chill their opposition to the bone and keep them from retaliating without a bit of heat to get them moving again. The Ice type acts as the polar opposite of the Fire type, and relies on the draining of energy from the environment in order to induce a frosty effect in order to attack and damage others. This is a lot harder than it sounds, for while it is quite easy to create exothermic reactions that can produce great amounts of heat energy, it is much harder biologically for these creatures to do so with endothermic reactions, which is highlighted in the relative rarity of the type compared to its fiery counterpart. In some cases, this can mean lowering the temperature just enough to make snow and ice form in the air, but in other cases, it can be cranked up to generate beams of frigid energy and howling blizzards to assault those that dare to stand against the type. In general, though, the type is defined by items that symbolize the cold, such as snow and ice, and possesses several interesting elemental properties as a result. For one thing, the ice type is the hallmark type for the hail weather condition, and is the only type that is naturally immune to damage from the weather hazard. Secondly, in conjunction with this, the use of hail will allow the ice type special attack blizzard to always hit, making it possible to guarantee direct hits with one of the type's most powerful attacks. Thirdly, those that have this type are completely immune to the sheer cold attack, and can actually deliver the same move with greater accuracy than other types. Fourthly, and most importantly, this type is the origin of the Freeze status condition, a horrifying status condition that can keep Pokémon from using any sort of moves to attack or defend themselves until they thaw, though the use of a Fire-type move can cure this instantly. In terms of how the type is used offensively, it is mainly divided into the use of Snow, Cold Air, or Frigid Energy in order to deal special damage, while physical attacks are usually delivered with either ice-covered body parts or with solid ice making a forceful impact that can readily skewer and crush those that get in the way of such moves. Though there might be some strong counters to the type, and little that it resists, the sheer annoyance that the freeze condition can bring, and the fact that it is a part of many of the type's most prevalent moves, nonetheless makes it a serious hazard that can turn the tide of battle in an instant if one gets lucky. Interestingly, while the process of cooling one's environment is not an easy task for any normal living creature to complete, the most common group to which the Ice-type Pokémon belong to is mammals, who have developed their icy powers as an adaptation to the frigid environments they prefer to live in. Following these are Pokémon whose bodies are materialistic constructs, whose powers make the most sense mechanically as they have little to no living tissue that could otherwise be affected or damaged by extreme temperatures. Aside from these two groups, there are only a few other outliers that have gained access to the power of the type through unusual methods, though some of them, such as the legendary Pokémon Qrem, are incredibly dangerous and not worth trifling with under any circumstances. While Pokémon assigned to the Ice-type predictably have access to a decent array of Ice-type attacks in the majority of cases, even if it only exists as a secondary type, it is important to note that these creatures often have natural access to other forms of offense that help to supplement their icy powers. In some cases, this can be attributed to a second type assignment but even in the case of pure types, other modes of offense that usually involve physically using their body to attack are quite prevalent, helping to round out their overall move repertoire. As such, ice types generally have a greater degree of move variety to them naturally than one might initially expect, and this goes both ways, as artificial sources of move teaching, like TMs and move tutors, show the type to be highly common among a huge variety of different Pokémon, and in turn, quite likely to be found among even the most mildly diverse of Pokémon movesets. In terms of stat averages, the Ice type is a well-rounded type that is surprisingly shaped with a fairly consistent and even array of average-based stats, despite how few Pokémon are actually assigned to the type. 
As a consequence of that specific issue though, it is also noted that, statistically, the ice type is one of the strongest overall. And while its average base stats do not rise very high above the average base stats for all types, the type is still above average in most of its base stats, only showing a weakness in its average base defense and speed stats. This does make some sense though, as most of the Pokemon assigned to the type are used to dealing with special attacks from other ice types, physical ice type moves being less prevalent than special ones, and ice tends to be heavy in some cases and can make these Pokemon slightly sluggish. Regardless though, the ice type is still surprisingly strong and well adapted to handle whatever is thrown at it, even if the Pokemon that comprise the type might not always individually be the strongest of fighters in some fashion or another. Currently, there are 40 recognized types of ice type Pokemon, 14 of them being pure ice types and the remaining 26 being dual types. Additionally, 14 of the dual types are primary ice types, while the remaining 12 are secondary ice types. They are broken down into the following categories. Mammals These Pokemon are unified by the fact that they are mammals and have adapted to frigid habitats for one reason or another, developing the power to use the cold as a weapon of combat in turn. These creatures generally have all come to make their homes in the most frigid of environments possible and thus stand out from other mammals, often using thick hair and or fat to keep themselves insulated from the cold or having an advanced internal heating system that works to keep their bodies warm even in the coldest of environments. Regardless, their evolutionary pathways indicate that the extreme cold has almost always been a constant in their development and existence in the natural world, though there are some exceptions created by unusual circumstances, such as the members of the Alolan Sandshrew and Vulpix families. Materialistic Constructs these Pokemon are unified by the fact that their bodies contain very little if any living tissue inside of them, dominantly being physical constructs that are animated by some unknown force or power. In many cases, sentience is brought on by abnormal electrical activity in the ice and other materials they are made out of, though some, like Cryagonal, do possess living organisms that serve as the seat of their consciousness even if their bodies are still mostly made of ice. This gives Cryagonal an advantage though, as it allows them to learn a wide variety of moves that go beyond what most ice types are capable of wielding, literally making them special snowflakes amongst their construct brethren. Plants This special category is reserved for the members of the Snowver family, which are the only grass types that naturally possess ice type powers as well. These creatures are related to arctic pines and are thus able to survive in extremely cold environments with relative ease being so in tune with their frozen habitats that their mere presence is enough to cause frost to form on nearby plants and summon snow from seemingly nowhere. This is highlighted in their primary ability, Snow Warning, which instantly summons a hailstorm or snowstorm the moment they hit a battlefield, in turn truly making them plants that most other plants should fear immensely. Birds these Pokemon are unified by the fact that they are birds, and are the only ones of their kind that are able to actively harness the power of cold as a weapon in battle. Delibird do not get access to any ice-type moves naturally, but their thick feather coats and penchant for living in frozen icy environments and around sharp cliffs nonetheless grants them the same elemental properties as the ice-type. Articuno, on the other hand, are truly legendary and have the power to lower the ambient air temperature to the point where ice forms on their wings. But unlike most birds, they are not at all bothered by it when flying, as it actually serves to make them slightly more aerodynamic and acts as a great source of power when it comes to giving opponents a harsh, cold shoulder. Fossil Pokemon This category is reserved for the members of the Amora family, creatures that were once extinct but brought back to life thanks to the help of modern technology. These creatures are unique among fossil Pokemon and rock types in general for their access to frigid attacks, as it makes them a severe threat to common rock types that have partial type assignments that render them vulnerable to ice type assaults. They are also incredibly peaceful by nature and can make great companions for beginning trainers that can handle their cold, though their nocturnal nature means that finding them outside of a blinding snowstorm in the dark or night might be difficult if you don't resurrect one from a fossil yourself. Mollusk This special category is reserved for Cloyster, who acquire their icy powers as a result of their preferred choice of habitat, living in cold, deep parts of the ocean, where the immense pressure and low temperatures causes ice to form around their bodies, freezing them on the outside. 
While their pre-evolved form, Shelter, are able to utilize some Ice-type attacks on their own naturally, it is only in evolution where they can make the most out of them and gain new ones, such as the powerful Icicle Crash attack. The fact that these creatures have such incredibly high physical defenses helps to make them one of the more rugged of Ice types, and definitely not something that a simple Fighting-type physical attacker alone is going to be able to break through regardless of type weakness. Crustacean this special category is reserved for Crabominable, which are unique among crustaceans for their ice-type assignment and access to powerful freezing attacks. These beasts are the result of Crab Brawler living in frigid places like Mount Lanakilla of the Alola region, and then evolving, not only developing a coat of hair to insulate against the cold, but also modified claws that are built for smashing rather than cutting. This grants these creatures a greater sense of power in physical fights, as it allows them to utilize attacks like Ice Punch and Avalanche with great effect, as well as the signature Ice Hammer attack, which can crush weaker foes easily at the expense of a bit of their speed. Spiritual This special category is reserved for Rotom when they are in their Frost form, being the result of them possessing special types of refrigerators that are susceptible to their unique brand of possession. While in this state, these creatures become partial Ice types and losing their Ghost type attributes, and while it definitely does help increase the stats as do the other forms that they can take, its biggest advantage is allowing them to learn the powerful Blizzard Attack, a move that can more than make them a serious threat against anything that dares to come at them with Pokémon weak to the type. Artificial This special category is reserved for Cast Form while they are in their Snowy Form. Due to the nature of their molecular structure, Cast form have the ability to alter the physical form when in the presence of certain types of weather conditions, manifested in their forecast ability, and in this case, this is the form that they take when there is intense hail or snowfall present in an area. This causes their body to freeze and solidify, further generating snow clouds around them that makes them pure ice types and in turn enabling them to make great use of the ice type attacks they gain naturally and deal powerful ice type damage with their weather ball attack. Extraterrestrial. This special category is reserved for Qrem, a beast that, along with Deoxys, is officially recognized as being from another world. Unlike Deoxys, however, this creature was a fully fledged sentient organism upon its arrival, having arrived encased in a meteorite. Despite the fact that the split of Zekrom and Reshiram from its body severely weakened it, Qrem displays unheard of powers and is without a doubt the most powerful ice type in existence not only because it is truly the only dragon that all dragons fear, but because it can use its body as a natural cryo-cooler to reach absolute zero. No human has ever managed to complete such a feat, and Qrem seems to be able to do so as if it was just second nature, generating monstrously cold winds and freezing everything near it with its powerful glaciate attack, not to mention the rarely seen ice burn and freeze shock attacks when in its abso fusion forms. Although very little is known about how Qrem thinks, the beast shows not only signs of extraordinary intelligence, but is also quite ancient in age. Like most dragons though, it is estimated that Qrem naturally has a longer lifespan than most other creatures, and the striking youth found in rare scale samples indicates that Qrem may only be a young adult at this point, despite being at least a thousand years old if not older. In looking at the ice type's advantages and disadvantages in battle, in terms of offense, the ice type has 4 advantages, 4 disadvantages, and no negative immunities. The type is at an advantage against the flying type because these creatures typically need to be mobile in the air for them to attack and move around. The extremely low temperatures used in ice type attacks act to incapacitate these creatures not only by slowing them down by lowering the high body temperatures, but also by potentially causing ice to form on their appendages making them too heavy to fly and rendering them incapable of readily defending themselves. Since many flying types are rendered fairly helpless if they cannot take to the skies, this serves as a major vulnerability of the type and one of the more defining advantages that the ice type has against a wide range of Pokemon. The type is at an advantage against the grass type because many grass type Pokemon have bodies that are vulnerable to the effects of extreme temperatures, in this case being vulnerable to the effects of extreme cold. Many grass types don't have some sort of defense against having their bodies frozen and severely damaged by cold, as even light frosts can be enough to kill normal plants, and with grass types, that is also the truth, 
though perhaps not always to that extreme. Regardless, however, these creatures are unable to easily raise their body temperature to compensate for extreme cold and can become sluggish when exposed to it, leaving them extremely vulnerable to the chilling effects of ice-type attacks. The type is at an advantage against the ground type because many ground types live in semi-arid conditions and environments where they are able to handle hot temperatures to at least some degree, but will often hide when the cold comes to avoid dealing with it and how sluggish it can make them. This directly translates into their typing and thus a weakness to frigid ice type attacks, but it is further noted that, in a more general sense, frozen water still has the eroding capabilities that liquid water has, and thus can deal damage in a similar fashion as the water type against ground type Pokemon. The type is at an advantage against the Dragon type because, while most types of common elemental forces are ineffective against the unique draconic energy that flows through Dragon types and serves as the source of power, Dragon types in general are alike in that they share an extreme vulnerability to cold temperatures. It is uncertain exactly why this is the case, but it is believed that it may have to do with their genetic ancestry with cold-blooded reptiles, though this obviously does not apply in all cases. Regardless, this makes the Ice Type one of the few types that can effectively shut down the Dragon Type and is thus a prime weapon to have access to when these beasts hit the battlefield. The type is at a disadvantage against the Fire Type because the fiery powers that these creatures assigned to that type possess allow them to keep their overall body temperatures at a much, much higher level than other types of life forms and can thus turn the air around them into a seething space where anything can get readily burned or scorched if they stay in their vicinity for too long. Not only does this have the effect of buffering the air temperature against extreme cold and thus dampens the power of freezing attacks, but it also means that even if a fire type is directly hit with an ice type attack, their higher body temperatures will help to keep their core body temperature at a higher level than what might be observed under normal circumstances, in turn lessening the damaging power of ice type attacks against their physical forms. The type is at a disadvantage against the water type because of the unique chemical properties that make water so useful. Unlike other types of liquids, water actually expands when it freezes, and because the cell membranes of most water type Pokemon are able to take a little bit of expansion, they are not so heavily affected by these attacks, and their bodies can quickly reform to normal states after being frozen. This results in them having a unique resistance against the element that few other types have, and ultimately serves to help give them a bonus against ice type Pokemon that dwell in the water though their bodies can have the moisture driven out of them and severely damaged if struck by the freeze-dry attack due to its unique properties. The type is at a disadvantage against the ice type because, as one might imagine, those that are a part of the type naturally have body forms that are designed to resist or even embrace cold temperatures. As a result, these creatures are not easily phased by the chilling effects of ice type moves and generally receive little damage from them compared to other types of attacks. Lastly, the type is at a disadvantage against the Steel type because the metal bodies of Steel types are designed to be energy sinks that can absorb and release energy in a way that helps to reduce the amount transferred into them by outside sources. While this doesn't help them much in the case of extreme heat, these creatures are able to use their metal bodies to insulate against the chilling effects of extreme cold and keep the inside safe. In turn, they take reduced damage from ice type attacks and are able to stand against the cold quite well even if it doesn't necessarily keep them from being potentially frozen by certain types of Ice-type attacks. Defensively speaking, the Ice-type has 1 resistance, 4 weaknesses, and no immunities. The type is strong against the Ice-type because, as previously mentioned, Pokémon of this type naturally possess bodies that are built to be able to handle extreme cold very well and even embrace it, so they are not so easily faced by attacks that rely on extremely cold temperatures to deal damage. The type is weak against the Fighting type because, while it may have properties that differ significantly from Rocky and Metallic Armor, the icy nature of many Pokémon assigned to this type renders them vulnerable to impulse-based strikes. This means that a strong Fighting type attack can readily cleave through ice and deal severe damage to anything that it is a part of, resulting in ice type Pokémon having their bodies severely damaged by such blows and potentially rendered incapable of battling temporarily if the damage is extensive enough until they have the time to heal or otherwise repair their bodies. The type is weak against the fire type because, even as solid and frigid as ice can be, its physical state can be returned to a liquid or gaseous state through the application of direct heat, 
resulting in any Pokémon with a body made of ice or with powers that depend on frigid conditions in order to work properly weak against extreme heat. Even if the target has a body that is normally resilient against heat and can lower the ambient air temperature enough to make the entire area freezing cold, it cannot abate heat for long, thus making any ice type naturally weak against anything that turns the temperature up to an extreme degree, which is often what happens in the execution of fire type attacks. The type is weak against the rock type because, while the bodies of ice type Pokemon can sometimes be sturdy, the crystalline nature of ice means that there are lattice points along which it can be cleaved, and with enough force, icy armor and bodies in general can be severely hurt in the process. The blunt force trauma associated with rock type attacks, and the unique energy used in rock type special attacks, is more than enough to deal critical damage to Pokemon with bodies partially or made completely out of ice by exploiting this flaw, in turn dealing severe damage to them and potentially causing irreparable damage in rare cases. Lastly, the type is weak against the steel type because, similar to the rock type, metal is able to not only resist the effects of extreme cold, but can effectively rely on the sheer mass of metal or energy used in steel type attacks to cleave right through ice. The hard, brutal power used in these sorts of attacks works quite well on the thick hides and blubber of more mammalian ice types and other creatures, and thus serves as a powerful weapon and one of the few type advantages that the steel type has from an offensive standpoint. As far as using the ice type in battle goes, it can definitely be said that it is a type that few trainers will be able to work with much at first, not only because of its rarity compared to the other elemental types, but also because the Pokémon assigned to the type tend to live in frigid environments that are rarely that friendly towards people and most Pokémon. Young Ice-type Pokémon can be hard to work with as their move diversity is usually quite limited and doesn't become strong or particularly diverse until they approach the point of evolution, though for most, that will not be too much of a problem as they are generally the kind of Pokémon that really aren't encountered until partway through a typical trainer's journey. Ice types can also be a problem later on, as while young ice types tend to be fairly easy to control and fun to be around, their evolved forms can be quite brutish and dangerous to have around if they are not properly trained. Furthermore, the type is held back by the fact that it is quite a poor choice from a defensive standpoint, as the type has a number of weaknesses and is only resistant against itself, making Pokémon assigned to the type fairly big targets that are unlikely to resist the best offenses thrown at them. However, with all of this said, the type has an advantage in that it is effective against some of the most common types known and can be utilized quite effectively, not only because of the ubiquitous nature of the type's most powerful attacks among Pokémon assigned to the type, but also because the Pokémon that are a part of it tend to be at least moderately intelligent. In addition, the very fact that it is responsible for and almost the only type that can inflict the freeze status condition makes it a terrifying threat to have to face, as well the attacks of the type that can inflict the condition generally only have a small chance of doing so, incapacitating the opposition unexpectedly can easily turn the tables and turn a losing battle into a winning one at the drop of a hat. The type has a further feather in its cap in that it is known as a dragon killer, as it is the only type aside from the fairy type and the dragon type itself that can shut down those ferocious beasts and in turn prove to be a serious thorn in the sides of many of the most powerful Pokémon known. The Ice type might not be one that will see a ton of action in terms of the use of actual Ice types in battle, but it is a dangerous force that can more than freeze opponents in their tracks and ultimately prove to be a terrible weapon that only the bravest of hotheads might have a chance against, and even then might only get a glimpse of the wintry terror that the type can truly bring to the battlefield. Thank you all for watching this video. It is always an honor to be able to speak with you all on the subject of Pokemon in a way that brings me great joy and happiness in my work. If you would like to keep tabs on past and future work, click that subscribe button, check out my work on DeviantArt, and don't be shy about following me on Twitter, where you can find pertinent announcements on upcoming work before it is officially posted. Links to both can be found in the video description. If you would like to support my work and help Miguel and I continue to produce more content for you and improve upon our presentation, please visit us at my Patreon page, which you can also find a link to in the video description. Yeah, no. With that, I thank you for watching, and I wish you well.